Like many, I devised my own little reasoning tests when first playing with ChatGPT. I asked it to play tic-tac-toe and try to lose, which it could not do. I noticed it had difficulty breaking out of strongly learned patterns, such as playing to win. I remember saying, once it can lose at tic-tac-toe, then maybe I'll start to get worried, since it would hint at a more flexible thinking. Similarly, other people noticed the first large language models struggled with simple reasoning tests, like blocks world problems. These tests require moving blocks one at a time to copy a given pattern, forcing you to plan out multiple steps into the future. The failure rate was very high, especially on problems requiring more than eight steps to solve. Apparent intelligence would dissolve into reasonable looking gibberish. And this is the hallmark of good reasoning, thoughts which build on each other to create new thoughts or conclusions. We call a series of statements good reasoning if you can share it and someone else can follow along and reach the same conclusion on their own. The field of computer science grew out of the dream of mechanizing thought, which began with math and formal logic. The same components can be rewired into a logic or circuit to ring the bell by closing either this switch or this one. For the first 70 years, much of progress in teaching machines to reason happened in very narrow, simplified domain of board games. But no matter the domain, all of these approaches required two things essential to reasoning, a world model and an algorithm. You can think of a world model as a simulator. It predicts how the environment will change in response to actions. The algorithm is a process for making decisions using the world model. Let's use computer chess as an example. The world model is simple. It's defined by the rules of chess plus a description of the board. You can provide it the position of all the pieces and next proposed move and it outputs a new board state and any resulting points earned or lost by each player. The algorithm tells you how to make moves. A simple chess algorithm would look ahead at each possible next move using the world model and check the value of the resulting board and then make the move with the best value, known as a greedy approach. Early chess AIs calculated this board value, mainly counting piece values. While this approach worked, it was only a rough approximation for how good a position was, nowhere near human level understanding. Of course, the further into the game's future the algorithm explores and evaluates, the better the play will be. In the extreme case, you would look out to the end of every possible game path and count the number of future wins possible from each position. The best move then being the next position with the most future wins. However, an exhaustive search through an entire chess game tree is impossible due to the immense size of the tree. There's more board positions than atoms in the universe. It's also not how humans play. With chess, a human player builds intuition from more and more experience in two key ways. How good a position feels, that is the chance of winning from that position, and how good a next potential move feels. And so the first key breakthrough in machines mimicking intuition for position quality came when neural networks replaced the hand-coded formulas Shannon used in 1989 with TD Gammon. The network would take a board position as input and output a single value just like the chess formulas did. This system learned to evaluate backgammon positions through millions of games of self-play, using wins and losses as feedback to improve its judgment. But its self-learned position intuition became so sophisticated that TD Gammon could reach top human level play using just simple one-step look ahead. But more complex games revealed the limits of this approach. For example, in Go, evaluating a position's true strength requires seeing several moves ahead, and with 250 possible moves per turn, versus chess's roughly 35 moves, 
Exploring even a few steps into the future becomes astronomically complex. And this is why by the early 2010s, no computer could beat the best human, Go players. The breakthrough had come from mimicking the other kind of human gameplay intuition. The ability to sense which moves are promising without evaluating every possibility or move intuition. In 2014, researchers Clark and Storkley tried this new approach, training a neural network to learn to mimic move intuition directly. Their system learned to predict which moves a human would make. So for any board position you provided as input, it output a probability of each possible next move, known as a policy function. This system then selects moves according to this probability distribution choosing the highest rated moves most often. But it never got beyond amateur level play. Humans could still outthink it because they combined both skills, position and move intuition, along with the ability to search ahead, that is imagine the future outcomes of a sequence of moves. And so a final unlock required a new approach to search. In 1987, Bruce Abramson, proposed a radical idea. What if you just tried some random games to see what happens? For example, in chess, if you're considering moving your knight, you'd play out hundreds of random games after that move to see how often you'd win. And you'd do the same for each possible next move, and then simply choose the move that led to the most wins. This was slightly less accurate than searching the entire tree, which is impossible but only required a tiny fraction of the work. These random playthroughs, known as rollouts, offered a way to estimate a move's strength without having to analyze every possible future, known as Monte Carlo tree search. However, the breakthrough would come from combining Monte Carlo tree search with neural networks we saw earlier, using both position and move intuition to guide the rollouts towards the most promising directions. And this led to a key experiment in gameplay and AI history, AlphaGo. The premise was simple. Use larger neural networks to learn both move and position intuition, and then use those to guide Monte Carlo tree search efficiently. As a result, the system could make decisions quickly in clear situations while dedicating more thinking or simulation time to complex positions where additional analysis would yield more information, much like a human player would, only thinking when you need to. This resulted in a computer program that had both grandmaster game intuition with superhuman search ability. It not only beat the best humans, but led to several remarkable moves, most famously move 37 in game two against Lee Sedol. This move was so unusual and creative that it stunned expert players. In case anyone thought the human games that AlphaGo initially learned from were somehow letting the system cheat, they followed this up with another system which didn't get any human games to learn on known as AlphaGo Zero. Instead, it began with no knowledge and learned entirely from self-play, learning only from wins and losses. And amazingly, the performance beat AlphaGo. So it turned out that human play, instead of being a crutch, actually hurt its performance since it limited its exploration of the space of possible gameplay styles. However, this was still progress on single games, and so it didn't offer a clear road to general reasoning, never mind have a conversation. The next key shift was also learning the world models from pure experience, like learning a game just by watching people play. This idea, dating back to the word of Schmidt Huber in the late 80s, was finally demonstrated with neural networks in the 2018 World Models paper by Ha and Schmidt Huber. In this work, they trained a world model neural network to act as a simulator, predicting what would happen next given any state in action. This model was learned from a few hours of random experience in an environment it built up an internal representation of how that world worked. 
once learned the AI could practice in its own imagined version of the environment, running thousands of simulated experiences, what they called dreams, much faster than real-time learning, where the controller learned effective strategies purely from practicing in these dreamed environments. Immediately after, researchers at DeepMind used this idea to fully generalize what they did with AlphaZero, known as MuZero. So they proposed a new system which could learn any game without being told the rules entirely from the experience of rewards. The key idea was not only to learn a world model to accelerate the initial training, but also use it during gameplay to simulate possible futures as they had done since AlphaGo. And to show generality, they tried it not only on classic board games such as Chess, Go, and Soji, but also 57 Atari games, all using the same neural network. This allowed MuZero to dream down branches of any game using a model it discovered for itself from experience. While this was a powerful and exciting method, there was still a key problem. Because there was no transfer learning, meaning getting better at one game didn't help it get better at other games, MuZero needed to train from scratch on every new game it learned, creating isolated silos of skills. And this was because the world model it learned was inflexible. What was still needed was a very general world model similar to the human mind. Which brings us back to the ChatGPT moment, a system which was trained to predict human-generated data across the entire web, as general as anything before it. Experiments with large language models revealed something surprising. These systems could effectively simulate any world model we might need given any context. Not only that, but it could evaluate situations and it could suggest reasonable actions to take given any situation. And that led to the first surprise, which was simply adding let's think step by step to the end of a prompt. This forced the model to break problems down into a chain of simpler thoughts. And while this basic chain of thought improved performance on reasoning tasks, it was still like a quick intuitive reasoning, moving forward with the first reasonable path of thought, charging down a path which often led to the wrong conclusion, like we saw in tic-tac-toe. This led to experiments which forced the language model to do a form of brainstorming known as tree of thought. Instead of following just one chain of thought, the system could explore multiple reasoning paths and then use the language model itself to evaluate which seemed the most promising. And that's where all the pieces came together, merging gameplay reasoning with language understanding. We could adapt game AI techniques like Monte Carlo Tree Search to explore chains of thought similar to how AlphaGo searched through possible move sequences. Instead of simulating move sequences, the system could now simulate steps of reasoning, exploring and evaluating different paths of logic before settling on the most promising one. And just as gameplay improved dramatically when systems learned from self-play, rather than copying human games, researchers turned to reinforcement learning to strengthen the reasoning strategies much like how humans learn to improve their reasoning through interaction with other humans and social cues, such as the nodding of understanding or furrowed brows of confusion. But for RL to work on an AI system, you need a reward signal similar to a human teacher following along with the student as they explain their reasoning, rewarding them when making valid steps and punishing them when a mistake is made. That leads to a key paper from OpenAI, Let's Verify Step by Step. This paper pointed towards an exciting next step. Models would attempt reasoning problems, generating a chain of thought, and get step-by-step -step feedback on each step in their reasoning process and gradually discover better reasoning strategies. This blend of intuition and search has led to dramatic improvements in reasoning abilities. 
today's models can handle tasks that seemed impossible just a few years ago. And these advances confirmed my initial insight, thinking longer improves performance. There's a clear relationship between the amount of computation spent during the reasoning process, measured in words or tokens generated during this internal deliberation, and accuracy. In other words, letting models think longer can be more effective than making them bigger. Each advance in reasoning ability forces us to search for harder challenges that push the goalposts further out to a place where machine intelligence once again dissolves into an illusion. This has pushed researchers to develop new challenges like the ARC test, where systems must discover patterns they've never seen before, forcing them to reason from scratch rather than rely on memorized solutions. And progress on these problems is steadily improving. And this brings us back to a profound question dividing the field. One side sees these reasoning chains as mere illusion, sophisticated pattern matching without true understanding or physical grounding, playing with shadows on Plato's cave, an elaborate mimicry. The other side views the distinction as meaningless. If a system can reliably reason its way to correct insights, does it matter how it got there? Speaking of learning to think better, this video is sponsored by Brilliant. You know how we just saw AI improve through guided practice? Well, that's exactly how Brilliant helps humans learn too. What I love about Brilliant is they don't just dump information on you. Every lesson is interactive. Whether you're exploring how neural networks work or learning to code, you're solving problems hands-on, building real understanding step-by-step. Step. Just like we saw with systems improving through practice, Brilliant helps you develop better reasoning skills daily through bite-sized interactive lessons crafted by experts. Support my channel by signing up at brilliant.org slash art of the problem to get 30 days free and 20% off an annual premium subscription.